Well, with just two games left in the regular season, we want to give a recruiting update mm-hmm. on where things stand. There's a lot of chatter before March Madness, and we do have a couple big decisions coming. So we just want to keep you guys in the loop, give you an update on where things stand for really the 2021 class and the 2022 class and yeah. the best information that we have. And, and let's start with who's committed for next season. The guy that I think we're going to forget to continue to talk about because he's on this team is Ben Gregg. And this is a kid that wasn't supposed to be on campus till next season. We all know the story now that he wasn't able to finish his senior season in high school. He's been getting good minutes for the Zags, and I think he's expected to contribute right away. Uh, You also have Caden Perry out Mm -hmm. of Battleground, a more traditional back-to-the-basket. A lot of people compare him to Brandon Clark. Love that Um, comparison. And then you've got Fambo Zhang. We don't know. He's technically a 2022 recruit. Mm-hmm. Um, we've heard chatter. He could reclassify to 2021. We don't know yet. But talk to me a, a little bit about these two guys, Ben Gregg and Caden Perry, that we know will be on campus next season. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, huge for Ben Gregg to get the chance to graduate early from high school and enroll on the number one team in the nation. I mean, I don't think anybody necessarily expected him to come in and start playing 15, 20 minutes a game. Uh, but the fact that he's been able to come in and even get a few minutes alongside, you know, some of the guys at the end of the bench and some of the freshmen this year uh, has been big for him. We've seen Ben Gregg already, I think, make leaps and bounds just in terms of how comfortable he and looks out on the floor. Uh, absolutely. I mean, his first couple of games, he looked like a high school senior playing with college guys, you know, and now you see him out there and uh, it just, just his fluidity on the court is, is, really noticeable so he's getting some extremely valuable time but uh Caden Perry is the guy who was McDonald's All-American nominee uh you know like you said he gets the comparison to Brandon Clark and I feel like it's a pretty fair comparison uh you know you watch highlights of him he is an extremely athletic big man very very fluid on the court uh and what we're gonna get out of him next year that you you might say we're lacking this year is, is kind of getting that true rim protection again. Caden Perry is a guy yeah. who really can lock down the paint and provide that extra bit of defense uh, that, you know, the Zags did so well with when they had, when they had Brandon Clark. So that that's a guy right away that I do see Caden Perry coming in and immediately contributing yep. next year and being a part of that rotation. I think that's uh, almost a given at this point, uh, especially if you look forward towards the players that might be committing here soon and Chet Holmgren and Hunter Salas. Yeah, I think the thing with Ben Gregg that has surprised me is both of us had watched his tape, seen his progression, and thought he could come on campus and contribute. I think what has surprised most people is where he's fit into the rotation. He's coming in before some guys, uh, you know, Omar Balos struggled with injuries. Yep. Um, but like, you know, Pavel Zakharov, like we thought he would be a bigger contributor this year, and he's coming in way before him or mm-hmm. Arlauskis, and Fuse even gone on record to saying, hey, if Timmy, if some of our bigs got into foul trouble in March, I feel comfortable throwing Ben out there, which what a, a compliment to Absolutely. a kid that should still be playing high school basketball. And so yeah. I think he's a kid that the longer he's in this program, I look a lot more to like a, a Corey Kispert transformation, totally different players. But I, I envision Ben Gregg as a dude that spends a few years in this program and develops mightily. Uh, and I do agree. Definitely. I think Caden Perry will come in, contribute right away. But getting on to the two names that everybody wants to know, we're all checking Twitter to see every day is something come out. We thought we might have news on one of them. We didn't. Yeah. Uh, and that's Chet Holmgren and Hunter Salas. We do have some updates. There's some new crystal ball projections out there. Mm -hmm. Uh, We do know for Hunter when his announcement date will be. I'll tell you what, by the time we get to March Madness, by the time that we have a bracket, we're sitting down watching those first and second rounds, we may have a decision on both of these guys. Yeah, it definitely could happen. I mean, we look right away. uh, Hunter Salas, let's start there. Uh, You know, we've done a video on Hunter and what a great player he could be for Gonzaga. But he's the one that received a new crystal ball projection. So out of the five crystal balls posted on 24-7 Sports for Hunter, four of the five are now saying Gonzaga. The one outstanding is for UK, and that is from a UK insider. For Kentucky. For Kentucky, correct. Not, not England. Yeah, yes, not England. That's for Kentucky. So, uh, you know, that that is the one... Uh, 
crystal ball projection not going towards Gonzaga. Well, and let's talk about that real quick because he actually, a lot of people said if he made his decision earlier in the process, he was heavily going towards Kentucky. Yeah. And there have been some issues in the Wildcat program. It sounds like, thank goodness, he, he waited a little bit that Zag fans might be lucky that he didn't decide earlier. Um, and I from what I'm picking up, that Kentucky insider, it might be the last one to kind of get the news the rest of them have that he's leaning towards Gonzaga. So I think that's sure. where that's coming from. And that that totally could be. I mean, I, you said it right away. I think the issues with inside the Wildcats program this year has definitely played a part. Uh, of course, Kentucky has not been the Kentucky that we're used to in terms of the performance on the floor. Uh, but we also saw, obviously, you know, the comments earlier in the season surrounding some of the young players and what Calipari said about them. Uh, we've seen some guys leave their program this year. So you have to think those things have all played in. And in terms of things that have probably factored in his decision as well, Hunter's seen Jalen Suggs come in, be a top 10 recruit, be showcased in this offense. Uh, and really, we've talked about this Gonzaga offense and their willingness to let players make reads. And that has been so key for this team. It's part of what's made them so hard to guard is because it's not a, the same set play with the same pass every time. They run the same motions, but they're letting Jalen, they're letting Joel Ayai, you know, letting their guards, Nemhart, make reads out of those sets. And I think it really showcases a player's ability and their IQ. And that's got to be attractive to a guy like Hunter. So, you know, I mean, his game it fits in so well for Gonzaga as well. We've seen Nemhard be so successful in the mid range this year, and Hunter Salas is a guy with an elite mid range game, a great pull up. Uh, you know, I mean, just last week they played Oak Hill Academy, who's a top twenty five program in the country, and Hunter had thirty two points, five rebounds, two blocks. So he's a guy that can score and affect the games in multiple different categories. And uh, a, just a huge, huge addition if he does commit to Gonzaga. Well, he's made leaps and bounds this season from even what we saw in his junior year. And, yeah. You know, he has four or five crystal balls for Gonzaga. Uh, it feels like as a Zags fan that um, it wasn't till Jalen committed. It almost felt like the last few years there were these big names. As it Brandon Williams down at Arizona, yep. a bunch of different big name recruits that it sounded like could be going to the Zags and didn't commit. It doesn't feel like it was until Jalen committed on national TV that we finally got our dude. And so I think Zeg fans are still a little bit like, come on, are we really going to get both of these guys? And yeah. Even though both are projected to wear a Gonzaga uniform next year, the one school that worries me with Hunter is Creighton. That's his hometown mm -hmm. team. And when you are watching college basketball this year as a Zags fan, you should want Creighton and Minnesota to have as bad of seasons as humanly yeah. possible. <laughs> For being selfish, yes. Because of Chet and Hunter. And yep. I'll tell you what, though. Creighton is probably in a better position as a program than they've ever been. They do play yeah. a fun style of basketball. And so I think they really are the wild card and all this could he still commit to Kentucky of course they're Kentucky uh, hopefully he commits to the Zags but I would say the one school to watch out for is Creighton moving on to Chet the number one overall recruit in next year's class we thought we might be getting news this week last week yeah he did not make an announcement best we know to this point is he supposed to make an announcement before his season is over which I believe is March 12th if I remember correctly so it's coming up we're coming up real soon on that. Um, Hunter as well. We said we knew his date. We didn't say it. March 26th yep. is when Hunter will be announcing on his birthday his decision. So uh, Chet should be here in the next couple weeks. I mean, it wasn't us breaking the news that he was going to commit last week. That was uh, just about every Twitter insider high school account you know, on Twitter was saying that he was going to commit. Chet's dad actually came out and said that he would not be committing that week. So it does just seem like a matter of time. Uh, I think at this point, everybody has seen Chet Holmgren. He's uh, been fortunate enough to play on national TV a few times this year. And I think everybody knows what you're getting in Chet. He's just an absolute, I mean, unicorn in terms of size and skill set and ability. Um, and this is a guy who his offense will just fit so well on Gonzaga. We've seen Gonzaga put offensive bigs in positions to succeed uh, and it doesn't have to be one style. You've seen Kyle Wiltshire succeed on the perimeter. You've seen Domas excel inside, Brandon Clark excel inside. Uh, and we also put our, our defensive guys in positions to affect the game. You look at how Brandon Clark was able 
to play defense and, and move around in that defense to help on weak side blocks. He averaged over three blocks a game. Chet averages over four blocks a game in high school. So, I mean, that a guy, that's a guy right there that getting the number one recruit in the nation will be such a milestone for Gonzaga. We've seen their recruiting improve every single year. Of course, we mentioned Jalen Suggs, who has been the biggest recruit to this point. Uh, but now, I mean, you're adding Chet to the mix. And, and let's just say real quick, I don't know if you watched the Mark Few show this past Sunday, but uh, Jalen did kind of leave the door open a little bit. And uh, Greg Heister even asked him because he mentioned playing with Chet. And Greg Heister even asked him if he left the door open. And, and Jalen's response to that was, you never know. So let, let's not kid ourselves here. I think we all know. Uh, Jalen's a top five pick in the NBA draft. 99.9% of the chance says he is going to the NBA. But uh, you know you've got a good insider already in the Gonzaga program, talking to Chet frequently, telling him about this program, telling him about this coaching staff. And so that just helps so tremendously. And the chance to land two McDonald's All-Americans, both Hunter Salas and Chet Holmgren recently made the McDonald's All-American list. Gonzaga's never landed more than one McDonald's All-American in a class. So to get two of those in a class is a huge step up. The thing I want to make sure people understand about Chet is getting the number one overall recruit would be a huge deal for Gonzaga. You you call him a, a unicorn. This is the type of talent that it reminds you a little bit of Trevor Lawrence at Clemson mm-hmm. is if they didn't have the requirement with the NBA, he'd be going straight to the NBA. Yeah. He'd probably be the number one overall pick this year and next. I mean, that's just how highly regarded this kid is. You know, this year, you don't know. Is it going to be Jalen, Evan Mobley? Is it going to be Kate Cunningham? Mm-hmm. There's a lot of talented guys, but this is a kid that is on a whole nother level. Um, give you guys a couple other schools just to watch out for with Chet, uh, even though heavily uh, the the insights that he's going to the Zags is the two that I'd watch out for are Michigan and Ohio State. Yeah, both close to home. You know, he is from Minnesota. Obviously, that's Big Ten country, mm-hmm. and, and Michigan and Ohio State. What Juwan Howard is doing at Michigan, especially getting dudes ready for the NBA, is a big deal. And so, again, if there's a wild card, those would be the two schools I would watch out for. Absolutely. So you're telling me March 12th, we could have a decision on Chet, March 26th for uh, Hunter Salas. Uh, the NCAA tournament starts on March 18th. Yep. My birthday is on March 19th. I already know what I want. I want uh, the Zegs as the number one overall seed, and I want these two recruits in Zegs unis. Absolutely. But let's talk about who else is out there. So these are the two big names. We know who's already committed. But let's look forward to next year. And these NCAA Division I schools for basketball get 13 scholarships. They currently, let's just assume, we know Corey's going to the NBA. We know, well, we're assuming that Jalen's going. And let's assume. It's a fair assumption. I'll tell you what, I've been saying this to you for a couple weeks now that that game versus San Francisco was uh, the last time we'll see Drew Timmy playing in his eggs uniform is this year. Is once he starts hitting those threes, yeah. we know he's not coming back next year unless he wants to. So let's just assume those three move on to the NBA. The Zags have 10 commitments for next year. Now, you could have some guys that are on the bench who aren't necessarily getting the minutes transfer. Um, we don't know who that may be, but guys always look for greener pastures. Mm-hmm. A big wild card in all this that we don't know is Aaron Cook. The NCAA has come out and said that this year doesn't count for eligibility. Does that apply to grad transfers? We don't really know yet, but you look at how much he's evolved in this Zags offense. I would not be shocked at all if we see Aaron Cook come back next year. Definitely. But assume that Hunter and Chet commit, and they've got 10 scholarships. That puts them up to 12. Who else is out there that we should be paying attention to that could be getting a look from the Zags? Yeah, so there's two transfer targets that I think have surfaced. Uh, first off, we have... Uh, man, hope things say this right here. Uh, Enoch Boyd, Boyce, I believe yeah, I said that not right. Not a transfer, but was committed. Correct. Yeah. Not a transfer, excuse me, yes, but was committed to Michigan State. Uh, five-star center. He recently decommitted from the Spartans. Uh, mentioned kind of the backlog of bigs they had coming in, and that he wants to be able to be you know a heavy part of the rotation and be able to shine a little bit. So he's back on the market. Gonzaga was involved with him ahead of time. He is, of course, a Canadian big man. Gonzaga has uh, notoriously kind of had a Canadian pipeline. 
Uh, and they are rumored to be back talking to him a little bit, seeing if he would fit within the program. Uh, but an extremely athletic big man, 6'10", 240, I think he comes in at with a plus wingspan. Uh, he's a very mobile big man, very mobile uh, with the ability to protect the rim as well. So that is a center right away. They could look to add, giving them kind of two of that back-to-basket centers between him and Caden Perry for next year. Uh, and then just yesterday, we saw a actual transfer target come out, and that would be A.J. Brahma from Robert Morris. Uh, kind of a unique case. If you look at his stats, you might kind of wonder a little bit of what, what's going on there. He's a 6'7 wing, but plays center for Robert Morris. They call him a guard. They call him a guard, uh, but he plays center for Robert Morris. So you look at Robert Morris's roster, they do not have much height at all. Uh, he is really, out of the guys that play, he is their tallest guy. So he's averaging 21 points and 10.3 rebounds a game on 51% field goal shooting this year. And I think the most unique thing that kind of threw me off when I looked into him was in two years now, he has attempted three three-point shots. He's over 3 attempted three three-point shots. And uh, so I had to dive into that a little bit. You know, I, that's just weird. So I looked Must into have it. a broke jumper or something. Yeah, yeah. It's got to be some mechanical issues, something. And, and you look at this guy, and it's not the case. No. He, he's got a very fluid mid-range game, uh, the ability to face up in the deep two-point area. He can, you know, take you to the hoop. He's athletic. Um, he's hitting turnaround jumpers, though. And you watch his jumper, and it is a smooth jumper with a relatively quick release for his size. So... A large part of me thinks that it's really coaching staff that has uh, prevented him from taking three-point shots because of where they're asking him to play. He, he is their center. Um, there's no question about that. So that is a guy the Zags are targeting. Uh, and I've learned with this coaching staff, too, that e even if I look at somebody and I don't see what they see, I don't question it anymore. Mark Few and this staff know what they're doing. They know how guys will fit within their offense when they bring them in. So that's a name to keep an eye on for next year as well. It's one of these things with Gonzaga just hitting the point they have as a program that they're going to check in on everyone. So when you hear, you know, some guy, you know, decommitted or some guys looking to transfer, you can almost guarantee that you're going to hear, yeah, Gonzaga has checked in because you just have to, you know, you don't get to the success this program has without yeah. at least checking in with every single guy. So absolutely. It'll be very interesting to see who decides to leave for the NBA, see if any guys within the program decide to transfer, see, I mean, it just feels weird that we're to the point that we're like, gosh, like those last three spots on the, you know, 13 total scholarships are a big, big deal. And they are. It's just the point this program has gotten to. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a lot of fun. I know we're excited. Obviously, we're less than three weeks away from brackets coming out in March Madness. Yeah. But as a as a Zags fan, you should be very, very excited because the future may be now for the Zags. But let's not act like this is necessarily the pinnacle. You know, you have the chance to get the number one overall recruit recruit in the next couple weeks another mcdonald's all-american and hunter salas things are very very exciting in zegsland and i cannot wait to watch it all unfold